This is our second video on how to filter data in Flutterflow. In our first video, we looked at how to filter data on a backend query. So that's if you go into here and you come down and click this filter button and how that stuff works. In this video, we're going to look at how to filter data with like buttons. And we've all had this experience with apps before. You go into Airbnb and it first shows you like all the data. Well, of course, it doesn't show you all the data, but it shows you just sort of like default data. And then you say, oh, I want a certain location. So you use a button or an input and you put it in there and it'll show you just those properties from the location. Or you'll push a button that says, I want it to have a pool. And you'll click that button and then it'll filter the data. It's displaying according to only ones that have pools. And we're going to show you how to do that in Flutterflow. And specifically, I want to show you how to filter with these things, these form elements down here, drop down, checkbox group, chips, and rating bar. And I'm also going to show you a really easy trick to reset your filters so you don't have to like undo everything manually if you want to start over with a new set of filters. Okay, so let's look at how our data is set up and then do some filtering. So in our database here, let's go over and here's our collection. It's just a collection of fruits. We've got a name. We've got a color attached to it. We've got price and an image. Okay, great. So let's first start out with a checkbox group. Okay, so I'm going to come into my column here and I'm just going to add, I'm going to search for a checkbox group right there. Add that in and let's just drag it on top. Okay, great. Then you can define your options down here and maybe we want to filter by the color of our fruit. So let's just do a red and a green and that should be fine. Okay. So we've got the options that we want to filter by. Well, then we need to add in a logic to actually do the filtering. So we come on to wherever we have bound our collection to. So here it's on our wrap, but for you, it could be on whatever you have. And we're going to go to our filter here. We're going to filter by our name, right? Because these are all the fields. Let's look back here real quick. So these are showing up all of these right here, all these fields that we have attached to our data. And we want the color. And what relation do we want? Okay. So what this means is you can see this all here, like equal to, not equal to, right? Blah, 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 blah. Well, how do you know which it is? Well, if the widget that we're using to filter here, these checkbox groups, if it's outputting a list or an array that is a collection of values, then you're going to want to do in or not in, depending what you're going to want to do. That would be for us, that'd be in. If it's outputting one value, like radio buttons, where you can only click one at a time, or maybe we have got an input where the input is only giving us a string, then you're going to want to use equal to or not equal to greater than or less or one of these twos. And you could kind of like reason your way through it. If you don't want to do it that way, there's another way to figure out what kind of value you're getting out of a widget. And I'll show you. So I know it's going to be in, but you could just press anything right here. And actually, you know what? Let's do a, a wrong one to see what it just looks like. And the value source right here is not going to be a specific value because that would be like if we wrote something in right here, if like if we wrote red in. No, but we want this dynamic. We want it so when the user clicks on it, that's when it filters. So we don't want a specific value. We want a value from a variable. And what do we want? We have unset. And what do we want? Well, let's click in here. We've got so many options, but what do we want? We want it from a widget state right? Because here's our widget, our checkbox group. And we want this to be filtered based on the state of the widget. What the heck does that mean? Well, when something is clicked or unclicked, selected or unselected, that's the state of that widget. And whatever state that is, we want to filter by that. So we want a widget state. And we click in here, it's going to show us the available options because we've got other widgets on this page, like this title and our app bar, right? Remember in Flutter, everything is a widget. But Flutterflow does this nice thing where it's going to recognize only those things that are available. Okay, cool. So now we see here, we can see what kind of value it's going to return for us. So we see our checkbox group. This is right here. And it's going to say, oh, 
what we get out of here, what is returned is a list of strings. So that tells us right there, oh, it's a list, right? Well, we can't have a list with greater than here. So we can just click in right here. We can confirm it. But of course, this is not going to work. So if we could confirm current variable is not valid because we're trying to say, hey, it's greater than this. Well, greater than a list of values, a collection of strings, a collection of words, because what's going to come out of here is if I had both of these clicked, for instance, it's just going to say red and green. That doesn't make any sense, right? So let's cancel out of here. Let's change it to in because we want to say when it's in the list from a variable, just like before, we grab our widget state. Awesome. Boom. And now we can confirm. Okay, cool. So let's go test our app right here. Let's reload it. Awesome. And so now if we click on red, it's not working. Oh yeah. <laughs> because if you got to come in here and you always got to confirm it, it wasn't scrolled down. So sometimes I forget about that. Great. So let's go back and instantly reload. Awesome. And if I just want to see only my red fruits, there we go. My red and green, beautiful. Look at that display. And I can just unclick them all if I want to start over. But of course, that's kind of annoying, right? I wish there were a way we could just press a button and it resets. And indeed there is. Let me show you. So let's go back to our app right here. And currently, this is something that's on the roadmap that's coming. But currently, we don't have anything that you can reset it. But we kind of do, and it's kind of fun hack. So let's come into here and let's just grab a button, button, and let's drag that in right under our checkbox group. And we're not going to make it pretty because we're just filtering stuff here. So we're going to call this reset. And then we're going to come into our actions and we're going to click on tab, of course. And what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to navigate to, and we're going to navigate to our current page. So our current page is filters, and we are going to navigate to our current page. Okay. And then let's just change the transition type to, you could do instant, but I found if I fade and just give it a few milliseconds, I get the sort of cleanest reset. Okay. Awesome. So now let's go back to our app. Great. Let's just grab our red and our green fruit. And now we want to reset. We want to start over. And you can imagine we had a bunch more here. And you can just say reset and everything resets. We clear this. So the UI is re-rendering to its initial state. And that's an easy way to do a reset button. Okay, awesome. So let's get out of here and let's filter. Let's get rid of our button right here. We don't really need that. Let's get rid of our checkbox group. And let's try filtering according to a drop down. Okay, let's come in here and add to our column. Let's say drop down, boom, up there. Let's define some options. This time, let's just do apple and cherry. All right, so we've got those. Once again, we need to set up our filtering. And we're getting an error here, of course, because this filter doesn't make sense anymore. So once again, let's think about this. So we are going to filter on color, not color this time. We're going to do name. And what's our relation this time? Well, of course, we're just selecting one. So we're going to want this to be equal to and a dynamic variable. We're going to set that widget stay. And we see our drop down. Beautiful. And confirm. And let's run our app. And let's grab our apples. We got two of them. Beautiful. Okay, next widget. Let's do some chips. Those are fun. Delete our drop down. Let's add in some chips. These are cool. Drag those up. Oh, not in there. No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to inside our uh, inside our column. Beautiful. Let's define some options. Let's do apple. And I don't want to train because that doesn't make any sense. And let's do cherry again. That's great. We can allow multiple select here. And so if we have multiple, then of course, we're going to want a relation of in right here because we're going to get a list of stuff back. So we're going to say in and blah, blah, blah. Y'all know this by now. And we can see, ah, yep, we're going to get a list. now. 
here's here's the thing. You might say, oh, if I didn't allow multi-select, what's going to happen? Well, let's check it out. If we go over here and we say to, to our choice chips and we unselect allow multi-select, what's it going to be? Then we're going to get back a string. So it's different. If you allow multi-select, then it's going to return a list. But if you don't do it, then you're just going to get a string. So you're going to want it to be one of those singular value relations like equal to. Okay, let's change it back to multi-select. Allow multi-select filter in widget state list. Beautiful. Confirm. Scroll. Confirm. And let's see our beautiful chips. Let's grab our apples and our cherries and look at that. Wonderful. Okay. Now the last thing, let's filter according to our rate rating bar. Let's dump that in, drag it up top here. That's nice. Now we don't really have any stars, like if you're rating something, but we do have the cost of each of these things. So. The way this widget works is that each of these are one value, like one, two, three. So this would be three, right? So we can come down here and we can change the icon. You have this in some apps like Yelp, where it'll say, you know, $1 icon if it's like the cheapest up to five is the most expensive. So let's look for a dollar. Oh, maybe a bunny. There we go. And let's grab that. So now that kind of makes more sense. And of course, you could add labels and stuff on here. Okay, great. And then let's come up here. Now we need to get rid of this filter. We're going to add one in. We're going to filter this time according to price. And what are we going to say? Well, we're going to say less than or equal to. So we've got a really primitive example here. If it's $3, so if there's three of these checks and it's $3, so we want anything that's $3 and below to be showing. So we got to filter according to or show according to anything that's less than three or equal to. And we want it equal to our rating bar. Beautiful. And confirm once again. And back to our test. Reload. And notice the default was set on three. So we're actually already filtering it. Because if we go to four, we get our peach added in. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Let's go down to one and beautiful. So that is filtering with buttons in Flutterflow. Let us know if you have any questions and comments below. In our next video, we're going to be doing simple search filtering. Like we got an input bar and you type stuff in and then it filters the list according to that. And we'll see you then.